Go for it, kid. <laughs> you always do this. I, shit, I right? like to do that. I like to. It's an icebreaker. All right, you, you do it then. Yeah, you be awkward right off the bat. Yeah. Right off the bat. Yeah. All right. Definitely. Well, welcome. <laughs> you done? No. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> How it started? All right. Welcome to another episode of What Does It Take Pod. Today's special guest is Reese. I'm here. What's up? We clipping the young off because he on his grown man game. Yep. He been on it for You're a not minute. Not young no more. <laughs> I've been wanting to take young off for a minute, but like I'm in a I'm in a war with Instagram right now, so I can't take the young off like on Apple Music and Spotify until you get that name on Instagram. Exactly. Yeah. Oh dang, it's a whole process. Bro, I can't because I'm like when you get like verified, you can't. They won't let you do anything like changing stuff because they verify you off of just that name. Damn. Even if I'm just taking the young off, they just, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> That's fucking whack. We got to hit him up, get a change, man. Yeah. So what was the reason to to drop the, the young moniker in front of Reese? I just feel like when you first hear young, what do you think of? What genre? Teenager. Rapper. Okay. I'm not a rapper. He's so like R&B. when I did start, like I went through a bunch of names, like in the beginning, I went through like Lil Reese, <laughs> Jay Reese, uh, I feel like those are the only two. And then I went to young Reese and I was like, okay, young Reese is cool. But, like, the genre of music that I'm, like, starting to make now is, like, I feel like Reese opens up a different, like, mm. when you just hear Reese, you're like, okay, that's simple, aesthetic, pleasing. And so I was just like, okay, I'm going to just take the young off and it'll just open up a little bit more doors for genres and stuff because yep. I, I don't consider myself a rapper, so. That makes sense. It's like the evolution of you. Yeah. So if you feel it, you embody it. Yep. And and I like it. I think it makes sense. Reese. No, that's dope. What genre do you feel like you fit in? Because I feel like, because uh, I listen to your music, I feel like you can fall into a few different categories, but what is like your main one like you would consider yourself? I would, I would really like say R&B, hip hop, but like the tape that I'm about to drop is all acoustic. And mm. it's like real just singer songwriter, just stripped down with an acoustic guitar in my voice. And so I feel like, the past music that I've been dropping is R&B hip hop, but like right now it's just more like an R&B pop. Mm. Like it can still fall in like that love making baby music, but like it's in like an acoustic form. So it's it's weird. It's like my own genre. Speaking That's of cool. baby music, you have too, right? Yep. Yeah. Then you just had got, uh, got engaged. Yeah. Man. Hey, man. Congratulations. Hey, congrats. And, uh, we got congrats on in that. the background. We got shout out. wife <laughs> wife shout in the out background yeah. today. So we gonna yeah. have to get She's her on the episode too. Yeah, yeah for so sure. My fiance now, so you're going everywhere I go. No, hey, hey, I love that. hey, you're doing it right, man. Yeah. You're doing it right. Definitely, for That's sure. awesome. So let's talk about the proposal, man, because I saw, uh, you know, that whole video went viral, and then. Uh, I saw David recording the picture, his big ass over here trying yeah. to be, I was telling him on the phone, I was like, bro, I saw you sneak in, trying to like be <laughs> away from the video and out, out of sight. He's like, man, yeah, I was, but I'm too damn big. But uh, talk about, you know, the process. I don't know if you've shared everything, like the planning of oh, it, yeah. but I saw it was very sweet, very beautiful, very sentimental. And uh, I want to hear like, you know, your process of going through all that. Dude, it was so much like planning a proposal and like keeping it a secret is so hard and stressful especially because she's nosy so like <laughs> she'll try and like where are you going did, yeah, you, did you see it coming <laughs> i did not no Ooh, she didn't okay. see it at okay. all and so she like there was like so much factors that played into it and like my brother and his girlfriend were in miami so she always knew like when i wanted to propose i wanted everyone there all the important people in my life i wanted there and so it threw her off and i was like okay this is a perfect time to do it because um nobody or like m my brother's not here like that's my only brother so she would think i would want him there and then i just hit up like the letter lady the flower lady and then uh my barber the day before i was getting my haircut and i'm like yo i don't have anybody to play music bro i'm freaking out like he was like just sing and he was like or what instrument do you want i was like i want like a violin or saxophonist and he was like bro my brother plays violin and i was like your brother lives in cali he was like, he's here for the holidays. Oh, oh shit. I'm like, all right. Bro, that timing was, like was meant to be. So yeah. It just happened. And I had my mom send out all the invitations. And yeah, it just, it was like, in that moment, it was like, yeah, I didn't want to be anywhere else, honestly. There, there's a phrase for that. It's called divine intervention. It was meant to be. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. It's, it was cool. It was. It felt so, like everything played. So how long were you planning? It was just like spur of the moment type shit? Like nah, you got all this done in like a couple of days? No, nah, I've been planning it. Well, like I knew I wanted, like when I made the decision that I wanted to propose was October. Okay. And then I went to go look for the ring in November. And then 
that day that I got. Were you haven't asked like her friends or family like I, what she likes, or you were just like. No, nah, I know what she likes. Like. Oh damn! Yeah, yeah bro, that's yeah. well to you because when I did, I just had to be like, hey, what do you? Yeah, no, I obviously like got the ring after I got the ring. I asked like her sister and then my mom and sister I and got stuff you. like, you think she'll like this? Yeah, because something that might look good to be, you know, when a woman looks at it, they might just be like, oh, that's trash. You're like, yeah, I like it. That's so nice. Wow. Yeah, can we change it? I even asked her, like, I, I asked her, like, 20 times in the car on the ride home. I'm like, do you actually like it? Because if not, we'll go back and exchange yeah. it. But, no, nah, she she fell in love with it. So. That's awesome. And then um, the you said your brother wasn't there when during the proposal? Yeah, he wasn't. So... For you saying like, hey, this is my only brother. I got to, you know, I wanted all my family around. Like, how hard was that for you to uh, execute? Or did you feel like this will partly kind of keep it a surprise because you won't see it coming? Yeah, for sure. Like, I wasn't, I'm not like a sensitive ass dude. Like, yeah. I'll, I knew that my brother was going out there to spend holidays with his, uh, with his girlfriend and her family. Okay. And so it was like, I knew he was going to be on FaceTime. So it didn't really like. His, I got you. And there's always, like, when the wedding comes up and everything. Yeah, so nah, like he's him. for sure the best man yeah. and stuff like that. So he's going to be there. I mean, if he if he's not there for that, yeah. It's, so, so you <laughs> cut, cut throat. Yeah. <laughs> so you said um, you're not an emotional guy. But, like, your genre, at least in the past, Ooh, was more good. R&B. So you I'm feel saying, like, like, more of, like, sensitive. Like, set, like oh, I'm, in a relationship I'm type. Like, I'm, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I love. But, like, when it comes down to, like, sensitive, like, Oh, if my homie says he can't pull up uh, to a party, like I'm not gonna be like, oh well, then don't go anywhere. Like I just saw you at the club. That's <laughs> oh, you know, like that. Like you're not gonna feel some type of way and not like yeah. you know fuck with him no more. Where I, I was you. going is like, do you feel that writing your music uh, and getting in touch with that side or that sentiment of you, you know, like the lover, the emotional person, does it help you kind of stay grounded outside of your music, or do you uh, feel like yeah, it doesn't really matter? Yeah, no, I mean, definitely, like, music plays a big part in our lives. Like, we, when I'm sad, I'll listen to, like, certain type of music. When I'm ready, when I'm hype, and I'm going my way to my game, I'll listen to a certain type of music. And so I feel like music plays a big part in everyone's life, mm -hmm. unless you're just boring. <laughs> but, yeah. No, I definitely think, like, the situations that we have and the experiences that we have as a couple, like, helps you know, me put emotion into like singing into a mic and stuff like that. I'll just close my eyes and just picture stuff. Has there ever been a time where you've written something and, and she's been like, oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Huh? Let me li let me listen to that again. Nah, take that. Out. <laughs> nah, I mean, there's definitely there's definitely like, I mean, she knows like music is music. I can't just we're in a relationship. So, of course, I can't every single song talk about our relationship. Like, right. It's it's a beautiful thing to do, but like people will get bored. And of mm -hmm. course I got to keep like fans engaged. So I got to talk about some stuff that some dude that's relevant like, that like a single guy would say, but like, she knows where we stand. Like, I mean, I'm definitely like 100% in a relationship, but of course, like I'm going to talk about, I can sing and, you know, rap about some, certain stuff that but she doesn't take it personal honestly. i think what really helps sorry Terry, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. i no. think what really helps though is because she's also in the social media world she understands that so and that's a big thing is like understanding each other where you're coming from not necessarily because you're saying one thing be uh because you're trying to put topics that other people can relate to not necessarily it could have been some from your past or whatever but doesn't mean you're doing it right now but the fact that she can understand that because she knows how the social media business works. I yeah. think that's what's pretty dope about your guys' relationship. Yeah, Cause that's sure. big. Some people have trust issues and be like, oh, you talking about this? Or yeah. you talking about- Exactly. What? You know, it, and that becomes very toxic real quick. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. pre that's pretty dope on like both It comes with the territory, you're right. You gotta, oh, yeah. you gotta have that stuff that people are gonna be like, oh damn, I feel that, yeah. or I resonate with it. Sure. No, definitely. And then Tay, um, you were gonna say something. So my question for you is, and this, since we're on like the relationship topic, and I think this is good for like a lot of people who's watching. So as you're in the music career and like you're continuing to like grow, become like who you are and on top of you becoming engaged, how has that transition been like for the two of you as far as, you know, tours, traveling Ooh. and then trying to balance the relationship? Now you have kids involved like and this is for like people who may go through the same thing, but haven't really become like established. So how has that 
transition been for you and what type of advice you you think like others could like benefit from? So I'm gonna be honest, like it's different from being in a relationship and like being in a relationship with an artist than being in a relationship with an artist and also having kids involved too. Cause like, mm -hmm. of course the kids got school. So when I do get an opportunity to go on tour, of course I want them at every show and I want her at every show, but being realistic, it's not like, that's not going to happen because they obviously have school and they got priorities too. Um, so I do feel like when it comes down to like, when I do get op an opportunity to go on tour, um, it's a conversation that we definitely would have. And of course she's gonna be at every show that she can be at mm -hmm. in every city that she can be at, but also it does get expensive too. Um, and the girls like they're four and five, so they obviously gotta, you know, they won't really know what's going on in tour. It's like late nights. It's really mm -hmm. unhealthy for kids too. It's not tour life oh, is not sure. for a four year old and five year old. Um, I would say for like just traveling in general and not just tour. Um, there are those times that I need to go to LA and like if she if nobody can watch the girls and I need to go out there for a few days, like she'll stay back and um hang out or like I'll just go out and I'll get Dang, as much one. done real or like one. try and get everything done that I can in a few days just mm -hmm. so I can get back to them. Um there were times that like I did in twenty twenty two, like I did put off and it was like solely my decision. Like I did put off going and making a trip to LA and getting stuff done. Um, I would rather be with like my family, but like we also said like one of our new year's resolutions or just going into the new year, we want to like, if she needs to go and travel or go to LA for a couple of days or for a day trip, go and like, I'm going to stay back and I'll watch the girls. And then if I need to go out there for a couple of days, like I got to do it. And a lot of it plays into like saving money too. Like I got people that I can stay with in LA and um, I don't have to spend money on a hotel. I can just get a little $100 Yeah, but you being out. a family man now too, like sometimes I'll know people, but if I'm traveling with my wife, I don't feel like that's really an environment for me and her to both be in, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Versus like when it's just you and the homies or whatever. Can bunk it's, up. It's, yeah, it can yeah. bunk up easily. That's not, not a problem. Nah, when it's, when it's me and her, I'm like, I can't hit up a homie and be like, yo, let us crash at your crib. I just yeah, feel and then both y'all on the couch. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. weird. Yeah. Um, going based off of that, so I know you started music, what was it, 2018, 2019? 20, I started music 2018, but like I started really doing music 2019. Uh, talk about what even got you started. I know you've always had a love, but like, you know, most of the time I feel like when we've talked to, for example, like when we had Richie on the show, he was starting at a way younger age. I yeah. feel like uh, you only being in now, what, four or five years? Yeah. Um, how did you find that passion? How did you become successful so fast? And on top of that, um, I know like you worked at was it borrows at the time? Like when, yeah. So talk garden. about that. Like you're trying to save money, build studio time, all like while trying to, you you know you're also working like a, a regular nine to five job before yeah. doing that. Um, so I started off. I went to college. I went to Arizona Christian University. And I was on a, a soccer scholarship, and I was just like after the season ended, I'm like, okay, I can honestly say like I just came to college for soccer like I didn't I didn't want to study anymore I didn't want to and it was a it was a Christian school so I was doing like Bible study and stuff I'm not a religious man like I'm spiritual I believe someone's up there but I'm not I don't want to you know sit in class and you know I had like two Bible studies a day it was just overwhelming and so after soccer season ended I, I was just getting bored and so I recorded, I had a stairwell in the dorms and I told one of my teammates, I was like, yo, I'm about to like finally showcase like I can sing on social media. And so he recorded me in the stairwell of our dorms. We posted up on Twitter the next day. Did I had you, like a- story. I don't mean to cut you off, but did you always know you could sing or is that like- I always, I always would sing. I didn't know I could sing. Dang, that's I different because like I would that. sing, but you know, if I'm in the car singing, <laughs> I turn the volume down. You do not want to hear that <laughs> shit at all. No, nah, my, my little sister, I would sing for her like on her birthdays every year, stuff like that. And so my whole family knew that I like could sing, but I was just so shy. Like I was not a shy person. I just didn't want to like 
get the hate comments. Yeah. Mm. And so posted it the next day, it went viral on Twitter. And like viral back then was like 3,000 retweets, stuff like that. And so it was just blowing up. Like my phone overheated to where like it turned <laughs> off. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try and post another video and see if it just happens. Maybe this was just luck. Post another video, went up. And then I called my mom after that second video. I'm like, maybe it was a little too soon, but I did call her and I was like, yo, I'm moving back home. Like I'm done doing this college stuff, like the season's over, I'm bored. I'm, and she was like, all right, well, I believe in you, I trust you. So she, you know, and I, she was like, but you're gonna get a job. So I got a job um, at Olive Garden. Barrows was before that, Barrows was okay. right after high school, before mm. college. Um, all, I got a job at Olive Garden as a server. Uh, and from there, I was just saving up tip money and I was paying for like studio time. Luckily, I uh, met my friend, his name's Stevie, he runs like Epicenter Recording Studios in Tempe, and I did one session there. The next day, the owner, his name's Chad, he he came in that night of my first studio session and heard my voice, and he, next day he said, yo, I just copied a key, I'm giving it to you. Oh, hey. that's lit. He gave that's me the key to the sweet. studio and was like, yo, you hit up Stevie whenever you want, you can get the studio when it's not booked. Boom, saved me a lot of money. Bro, what Big a real time. one. That's awesome. That's crazy. My brother was doing like events at the time, with Class P and they were doing like Monarch and um, that's when Monarch was really popping the upstairs and stuff yeah. like that. And so my brother would just let me perform for free like at the events and stuff. And so that's like kind of where I got, I was performing as Jay Reese at that time. I was doing like, if I go back at the videos and I'm like, bro, this was so cringe. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm like, you gotta now start I see somewhere, where though. it started. Yeah. Like, and I eventually when I do, if I do get to where I wanna be, I can go back and get videos of that, put in the documentary and stuff. And so that's just where I started. And then from there, it was just, I just moved to LA with my brother, slept on his couch. And he was just like, you're not sleeping here unless you start making connections. And he mm. was, and I was like, all right. So every day I would get up, go down to like Melrose, run into people. I went down and I, I kept walking past No Jumper every single, like every other day I would walk past No Jumper trying to run into Adam get me on the podcast, get me yeah. on the podcast, like just, and then I ran into, um, well, I didn't run into him. I got a call from French Montana's bodyguard and that's how I got connected with French. Yeah, how long ago that's was that? Cool. That was, so I met him at the end of 2019. Okay. No, I met him at the, yeah, at the end of 2019, right after I dropped Private Islands. And then from there, that's how I started getting connected with French. So wait, so how did you uh, meet the bodyguard though? How did that? How did that come? So up? my manager at the time, well, he's still my manager. His name's Corey. Okay. And he grew up with French Montana's bodyguard, and so mm. his bodyguard was seeing um, him like Corey post me on social media and <coughs> stuff, and then he finally was like, "Yo, who's this kid? Give me his number. I want to get on the phone with him." So my manager Corey's like, "Yo, this is a good connect," and so I got a call from him, and he's like, "Yo, uh, just come to the crib," and I was like. Yo, I don't know if this is really French's bodyguard. Like, <laughs> who is this guy? Yeah, he's like, like, he's like, yo, you tell me this like five ten, two forty. So he sent me the no, address, and I'm like, this shit says Calabasas, and I just like, you know, whoever lives in Calabasas, they gotta have money. I gotta have money. And yeah. so I searched it up. I looked up on Google Maps, and I'm like, look at the <laughs> he's crib. over here getting zooms. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not gonna pull up to someone's crib and him not be there. So I pull up. I swear to God, bro, I pull up. I look behind me. And unloading the groceries at the other house across the street is logic. I'm like, oh, shit. Bobby. Hey, these celebrities really do unload their groceries. Sound like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so I, I, He's stupid. Yeah, so he I said, walked up. He said they don't got a butler or some shit unloading the yeah. oh, man, that's I felt funny. weird, though, because he invited me to French's crib, and I'm like, French didn't invite me to the crib, so I feel weird. Yeah, me. no, I feel Have that. him text me. <laughs> yeah. I, was I like, need a I was, personal at the, invite. At the moment, I'm like, this is still not French's crib because I don't mm. see nothing that French would. And then he walks me through the gate. We don't go into the house. We go into the Casita house, and I see all the plaques. It's a, it's his studio. All the plaques, like, along the wall. And I'm like, That's oh, so cool. shit. You're we're like at French yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are his. Like, yeah. he's not going to keep them somewhere else. And so <laughs> from there, it was just like. I was recording in the studio, like Matt, his name is Max, and he was having me like re like show him some music and record. Max a bit is a bodyguard. Yeah. Next thing I know, walked through the door was French. Into that the same studio. day, or was it same a whole day. different? Okay. I'm like, that's cool. Oh shit! Like that's him. This at is the, his yeah. Grim. At the time, I'm like, I did 
like see celebrities, but like I didn't like be in the, I was never in the same room as a celebrity. And so when I saw him, I'm like, all right, I gotta stop recording. Like this shit. Did, did you play it cool or were you no, like nervous cool. as hell? I was never like I was never like, oh my gosh, bro, you're French Montana. Like, can I get an autograph? Because yeah. <laughs> I'm at his crib. Like, I, I yeah, gotta, it's he's like, yo, who the fuck is this fanboy right now? Yeah. <laughs> two months down the road, French gave me like the codes to his crib. Like, I had the like code to through? his studio. I had the code cool. to his gate, to the front gate. The security at the front of the neighborhood knew my name. So it was pretty cool. Like, he just brought me T in. Tag French. Salam alaikum, French. Wait, yeah. so <laughs> what was the uh, the interaction like when he walked in? Like, how how did that go about? French is like a real like. <laughs> You can never tell what type of mood he's in because he's just straight. Like he has the same face on his, <laughs> same expression on his face, twenty four seven. And I just was like, "Yo, what's up? Like, nice to meet you." Da, da, da. And he was just like, at first, he was just like, "Yo, what up?" Da, da, da. And I, I didn't know his personality, so I'm like, he didn't really want to meet me. I looked at Max. I said, "Why'd you bring me here, bro?" Like, I, I don't like. I feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And he's like, "Nah, it's good." Like, so I ended up leaving. He's like, yo, we got an event later tonight. Max told me we got an event later tonight. And I'm like, all right, I'll pull up. And, like, I forgot about the event, honestly, because he didn't hit me up. And I'm like, I'm not going to hit him up and be like, yo, what's up with the event? Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't want to bug. And then my DJ, Truly, he was like, yo, uh, Drake's party's tonight. We Like, I got to connect, but let's go. So I'm like, all right, let's go. If you, if you can get us in, I'm down to go. And so... We go, we pull up to the gate, and Truly gets his connect. Truly, I'm sorry, bro, but I got to expose you for this. <laughs> uh -oh. Truly gets his connect, and he's like, yo, you going to get us in? Dude comes to the gate. He tries to tell security, like, yo, they're good. They're on the list. Security looks at him like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> like, so I'm sitting out here in the street, and I'm oh, like, shit. Truly, come on, bro. It's it's 1.30 in the morning. You got to stand out here on Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> bro, and I'm so just like, yo, so then I, I'm like, oh, wait, this might be the event that Max is talking about. Because I saw French's, I saw a Red Rolls Royce pulling yeah. in. So I'm like, okay, that might be French's crit or French's uh, car. So I call Max. And he's like, I hear it. He's in the club somewhere. I'm like, yo. I'm like, yo, I'm at Drake's uh, party. Are you here? And he's like, yeah, I told you this is the event that I'm coming to. And I'm like, it's a long shot, but can you come get us? He's like, who you with? I'm like, my DJ. He's like, all right, hold up. Two minutes later, bro, he comes, looks at security. He goes, doesn't even say nothing. He Damn. goes, and we just walked in. So you were I'm the like, plug, not your DJ. I look, at, I look at the security guard. I look at the security guard that told us no at first. I'm like, I told up? you. Yeah, I, I just walked up? past him like, you know yeah, who I am. <laughs> no, nah, but it was cool. That's where I got my, I got, I met Chris Brown that night. I met. I heard Super you got Dog. a track with Chris Brown right now. Yeah, too. I got, yeah. It, yeah unreleased, got, so yeah. Yeah. Right? All right. How you know that? Idea. I you do my I do my right. research, yeah, bro. Hold on a he second. Do my research. Who's telling you this? Nah. He got an inside. I got plug. my sources, bro. I can't be telling you my so, shit. So I, I want to rewind <laughs> a little bit, um, because people don't usually hear or see the effort or like the struggle and the hustle and the grind. Um, so it sounds like your mom and your and your brother were supportive of you. And you're like, hey, look, I'm trying to do this. And your mom says, Hey, I trust you and I believe in you, but you gotta get it. So it's like having that trust and also a nudge is nice it sets you up to be yeah. like i gotta go in and just knock it down now yeah definitely i mean our whole family bro like justice at the time he just started youtube so he knew how the social media game was and he was trying to build his stuff as well um and that's one of the reasons why he moved out to la and then my mom like if you met my mom you'd be like yeah like as long as her kids are happy mm. she's happy like that's honestly. dope of her though because you don't really see a lot of parents that are like mm -hmm. that sometimes they're some parents are a little bit more hands-on and they're like oh i want you to be this 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 and then you know that kid might feel a lot of pressure like if they don't end up following through with what their parents have planned for them they end up being stuck depressed or even end up worse not doing anything you yeah 100 um so i think that's really cool that you had that support but um going back to the drake thing so when you got into that party, I think I commend you on that because for me, I feel like, you know, I've had people hit me up saying, oh, I got the plug, you know, let's go to this event. I'm like, yo, are you sure? Because you know how it is. Sometimes I feel like they allow women to get into that stuff. But as a man, it's, sometimes. it's way harder. Yeah, yeah, no sometimes. Hold on a sometimes. second. I'm trying let's, to be let's not, clarify yeah, that real quick. I'm if not you trying look to be good, sexist or anything. If you look, no, it's not sexist. If you look good and you're, you're going. It is what it is. And you get in. Yeah. yeah. 
Guy got to prove something. But yeah. it's the way it is. Yeah. As, a, as a man, like, you pulling up to these events, I feel like it's nerve-wracking as hell and embarrassing. Bro, like, like, if you just show up and you're just like... When they first said, no, you can't get in this, I felt like a groupie, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, yo, truly, you just got us embarrassed, bro. He's like, hold on, let me fix that. I can't hey, do that. Like, oh, even hey, Chris Brown out like here recently. G, I swear. I feel like a top G. I was like, yo, it is what it is. Like, you said top G. Top G, but, shout out Andrew, Andrew Tate. <laughs> Yeah, that Andrew Tate is. Yeah, he's going. He's crazy. different. Yeah. He's, yeah. But um, for me, like even when Chris Brown was out here recently, I had a plug that was he's boys with friend, uh, Chris Brown, and I'm like, even having him as a connection, I felt uneasy. I was like, nothing set in stone. I'm like, I'm not gonna sit around and wait. That shit gonna be embarrassing if you don't get in. Like, yeah, I'm never like the that. type to like beg to get into an event. Facts. And, or like hit someone up countless times. Like, yo, bro, you're in the city, whatever. Da da. Um, but I would say like connections to the people like that, like directly to them is like, cool. You know what I'm saying? So walk us through the event, man. How did the event go? Like once you got in, it was cool. Like it was already one thirty, So mm-hmm. it was in LA though. They party like they're out until like 4am at these clubs. And so it was cool. Like we walked in as soon as we walked in, Ma- Max is like seven, two. Seven two big old dark dude. So everyone sees him walking through the building, and, he, and I didn't know how respected he was until we walked through the whole uh, venue to French's table. But like we passed everybody that you could think of. Yo, I saw Kylie Jenner that night, right? And she walked through the back with like seven bald dudes with suits <laughs> on. I swear to God, nobody could get like anywhere like within like if we were this close, you're getting socked by this guitar. <laughs> Sheesh. I'm so, yeah. And this is like an event with all like celebrities this and is shit. Everybody. That's crazy. Drake, Ludacris, Snoop Dogg, Luda. Diddy. She has security around her like that. That's crazy. She got you all the time. No, I'll tell you some crazy shit though. So I feel like I'm talking a lot. No, no, no. This is inside scoop. No, keep this going. Take a sip and tell us a story. We gotta hear it. We're here for the story time. So I was out here, flew back out to uh, L.A. that same night. French had a studio session at I'm, a, uh, I'm cutting you. Were you guys in a relationship at that no, time? No. Not yet? Okay. No. So French had a studio session on Sunset Boulevard. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to pull up, whatever. We pull up. His brother's there. I'll show you guys the video. Yeah, after, I'll, I'll find the video, and I'll send it to you guys so you guys can pop it up. Okay. But – his brother's there. French recorded us. Like, he showed us, like, an unreleased record. And me and his brother, AU, like, we legit will still tell him to this day, yo, you still haven't dropped that record. Like, you got to drop it. It's a hit. But he recorded us in the in the studio. Like, we were dancing to it. That literally, like, 30 minutes later, he was like, yo, we're finna go to the store real quick. Uh, do you want to come? French asked me. So I'm like, right, I'm not going to tell French no. Like, I mean, we're just, let's just go to the store. Yeah, you got to. So <laughs> we leave. And, like, Security comes, a few other people come, and he tells his engineer, Mix, like, y'all, I'm going to be right back. So I'm like, all right. He's like, just keep working on the, on, the, on the song or whatever. So his engineer stays there. We all leave, and we go, but we're driving through the hills. I'm like, yo, we're not going to no store, bro. <laughs> we pull up to an event. Yo, I'm in, like, sweat, a sweatshirt. Oh, like, I'm in a That's how you pulled fit. up to Drake's crib, too? No, no, no. I pulled up, I pulled up fitted to that I pulled up in like Oh, okay. A so this was a different day. Yeah, this okay. is a different day. And we pull up. We get out of the car. And I see people going into this house. We walk into the house. And I'm like, yo, where are we at? He said, it's Alicia Keys' crib. Oh, man. Mm. It's hey, a party, yo. bro. Shit. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Man, I'm you could really at least walk, warn me. I'm really walking around with French now. like, And French was just, it started to where French wasn't personally like, yo, you want to come to these events with us? Da, da, da. But Max was like, yo, pull up with us pull up with us da, da, da. and so we were bro every night it was like a different event for a celebrity like i never realized how much celebrities move around until i was moving around with french and every single night there was a different type of event and so that's where i met a lot of my connections out in la that's and so cool man yeah it's played a huge part when i go out there now like I can connect with other people that French has unintentionally connected me with. Mm-hmm. So out of other than French, obviously, who do you feel like you built like really gr- good connections with that you still will hit up? Uh, maybe not day to day, but you guys feel like you guys are pretty close right now. Bro, I met uh, like through French. Well, like through French, he um, 
would have his manager like hit up a lot of these like labels and stuff. And so I um, had a lot of meetings with labels. And so now I'm connected with a lot of A&Rs. Like um, I'm connected because he's signed to Epic. So I know like the CEO of Epic, like I can legit text and call them and stuff or like ask them for opinions on songs. Um, L.A. Reed, like. Oh, shoot. Yeah, like a week after I met French, I was in an office with L.A. Reed and he offered me a fat ass deal. But like. At the time, I was buzzing, so I was just like, nah. You're like, I'm not taking but first contract. Right, right now, right. I'll be honest, like, a couple months ago, I was looking back at it like, maybe I should have took a little bit of consideration in that deal. But I don't regret nothing, because now I'm signed to French, so I don't regret nothing. Mm -hmm. I feel like congrats everything. on that, man, with Thank the French. You. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, when did that When did you sign with the... Uh... August last year. So Okay, dope. It's been a little bit more than a year. A, few, a year and How was the... Uh, so that day you signed... What was that day like? Like, did you know you were getting signed that day? Like, walk us through that. I'm going to be honest, bro. Like, that trip, because I signed in Vegas. That trip, number one, I didn't travel. She wasn't with me. Um, and, like, it was a big moment. Like, I mean, I definitely wanted her there, and I should have had her there. Um, but it was me, my brother, uh... Nick, my cameraman, my uh, truly my DJ, and then my manager, Corey, and then Max. Max was with French. And so, like, the first day I pulled up on French, like, I didn't sign. I was supposed to sign that night, but it didn't seem like that was the vibe. Mm -hmm. I literally flew out to Vegas to sign. And French had a, an event that night, and we, out, we went to the event at Dre's, and I left early. I don't like the club. And like I went out there to sign. I didn't want to like have go. fun and party. Yeah, yeah. you're like this is fun. business for me. Yeah, I was like this is a business, and I get it. It's French, but I didn't want to like just keep following. Like I was ready to sign and get my shit going. And then the next day, um, I had a flight like later that evening, and I ended up signing. We went over to his house that morning. He was up at or he has like a penthouse on the strip, so we went up to the penthouse. And we were just kicking it there for like an hour. And then his lawyer showed up and I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm about to sign. Mm. And then he came down and like, we just, I just signed. And then that was it. Like, so when you were saying it didn't feel, vi the vibe didn't feel right the day before, is it mainly because it seemed like all oh, you guys were just going out to party and whatever, or did you feel like, like what was, he the, just had a lot more, he had a lot of other shit going on. And cause it seems like from his, per what you're describing his personality, he just seems like, extremely focused like bro i don't want to say weird. monotone but like from the conversations you're like oh he's not fucking with me even though he really was yeah that's but. that that's what i had to learn like even that next day i signed and i'm like he's really not fucking with me like today like, <laughs> like and now you're signed for a year and he's like, like, yeah. and like but i've like i've i've been with french after that and like it's you know it's good vibes she still hasn't even met french to this day dang that's crazy um but we're actually, I actually, uh, we were supposed to go, we're supposed to go out to Vegas on Saturday. Like we were just gonna do like a little day trip, drive out there, come back Sunday, cause he has an event at Drea's. He has his release party for his album or his mm. mixtape, but we're still debating if we wanna go out there. Um, but nah, French is a cool dude. Like it definitely, it's more of like just a, I'm signed to Coke boys, but I'm still doing my own shit. Like mm -hmm. the he, contract allows you to do that too. Yeah, cause... like I have full control. So does it have anything about like, you know, how many shows you got to perform, how many? Nah, it's uh, not a 360. It's, okay. a, it's a oh. production deal. So it's basically like he funds like my production shit. And then at once I turn in my album, which I'm about to turn in my album, then he goes and shops it. So basically he doesn't even have a minimum of how many albums you got to put out. Because you don't really, yeah, I feel like you don't really put out hella tracks back to back. It's yeah, more, nah. I'm like, bro, I'm so like particular with what I put out and like it yeah, fucks yeah. it up sometimes because I'll <laughs> sit here and I'll be like I haven't dropped for three four months bro like this is you know and 2022 like I did take a big break on music um and like I was seeing this on uh I didn't even see it my brother told me about it and like when you get into a relationship you don't catch yourself like you put all your all into that relationship mm -hmm. in the first like year year and a half and it's not a bad thing. It's just, I did like track away from doing music and it wasn't like, I wouldn't even say it's like, we did it intentionally. It's just, 
I was so focused on like making sure our relationship was straight and like I care about my happiness mm. way more oh, than for sure. you know mm. putting out records right now. And so I feel like our relationship is so strong right now that when I do need to take a trip to LA and I need to get that shit done for like a few days, I'm going to go like you know we're we're strong like I, I I just took a trip out to Kansas and I made that whole tape about her um and just little stuff like that like this year like I'm going to definitely start taking more trips out to LA and um Kansas and yeah, like that's just, that, that's super sorry you now you're good I don't want to cut you off but I, I wanted to jump in now and say um that's big it, it, you know your brother pointed out so you got someone in your corner that's going to be like hey listen you know you, get back to doing this, get back to doing that. But that happens in a lot of relationships, you know, especially in the first, I would say year to year and a half. Cause you know, you gotta go through how you feel about somebody compatibility. Like how do I really feel towards someone? Cause I gotta give them my time. I gotta give them my effort. You gotta go through stuff that's hard, but kudos to you for, you know, having someone in your corner. That's like, Hey man, you know, you got to pump out some more music or, you know, yeah. stay on your grind. Cause being focused and having a goal, that's a, that's a hard thing for, uh, you know, a guy to to balance because you got to stay on your grind, whatever it is. You know, it could be could be you know a musician. You could have a entrepreneurship, a business. You got to do numbers at the office. You know, you're like, I want to take the day off and go see my wife. Well, well, if I do this, oh knows that like I got to hit these production numbers and then so that's a juggling act. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the biggest thing about it, I think. The coolest thing, the coolest thing about like doing this podcast is like being able to like interact and hear people's stories, and like everyone we bring in here has a story to like how they became successful. And like yours is like that shit like full circle. Yeah. And even before she came into the picture, like it still played out the way it was supposed to play out. Like, and one thing I can I respect about you is that you weren't like a groupie. Like French Montana was, was interested, but he was interested because you're fucking good. And like you played that shit, you played your cars like perfect, bro. Yeah. So like, and it's it's great to you, man. Respect to you for like even like now you have a strong relationship with him. And like you say, you took care of home first with the wifey and the kids. So like now, like everything just falls into play, man. So like, kudos to you, bro, for that I'm journey. To that. I feel like we all hyping you up right now, but I'm spitting nothing. <laughs> no, nah, straight, straight up. No, but honestly, I feel like um, why I even started following you guys outside of like discovering you through Faz and all that stuff. Um, what I love about your family is I feel like you and all your siblings and from what we hear about your mom, you guys seem hella family oriented. Yeah. And as a, 100%. you know, man, especially being in the industry that you're in, that's tough because I feel like, you know, some of the people that we know, they it's like solo dolo. You on a mission, you grinding, you got to do what you and you were talking about how, you know, they got to move. You have to move completely different because you got two beautiful girls. You got a fiance now. And, you know, you got your family out here in Arizona. So I feel like it's really tough to be on your grind and balance all that out. Yeah, That's it's tough. definitely, it's definitely, I would say, like, I hide a lot of the stress behind it. But it is, like, really stressful, like, understanding. I look at, like, I'll be fully transparent. Like, I'll look at the camera when I say this. Like, I'm definitely not where I want to be. Um, I did take a year off of what I did. And like, I did it honestly, intentionally. Like I was making sure like our relationship was good. Um, I got a fiance now, so it's honestly time to turn up. Like it is what it is. And you know, you're gonna be, see a lot more, I would say trips. And um, I'm just ready to like build more connections and work these countless hours. like. I'm ready, to, and I, I recorded my crib still. Like, I recorded my crib. I got a, I got like a little mini studio in my room, and I run Pro Tools and stuff like that. So I'll just record my shit, send it off to my engineer, have him do it. But I definitely want to get back into, you know, dropping more consistently. I already got like my releases lined up for like the next few months and stuff. So it's definitely you're gonna see a lot more of like Reese music. Oh yeah, not young Reese, but Reese. Yeah. Reese. Reese. Well, right oh, now, if it's, it's, Instagram don't stop yeah, playing with yeah, yeah, yeah. me, so, Instagram get your no. shit together. It's hard. They all like I try to change my username. And they're just like contact support. I'm like, who do I contact? Who Who is the support? Where are you at? Yeah. <laughs> they don't answer, bro. I'm sure. uh, right, bro. But yeah, aside from you know, like always saying we building you up, but it is what it is because yeah. for the people watching or and listening, um, you know, I tuned into the music. Mike, let, let me go through a couple of the songs and stuff and. 
um, unbiasedly, or as maybe it is subjective because music is about taste. But regardless, when I heard, I was like, okay, you can hear that. First of all, you have a good voice. Thank you. Yeah. Paul, is that no homo? Is it? No. No, no, no homo? No, you oh, got he's, a, he's actually an artist. You know, this <laughs> comes from no I mean, I'm part. So, no, you got a good voice and you know your genre. Right, like you do a little Spanish music, yeah, which I actually love, man. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's fire. Um, Thank you. So yeah, so y you're comfortable in your voice because you know there's some artists that are like, they might be getting told what to do or like, yeah. hey, you need to stay. This is your lane. Do this, and it's like, yeah, it's good, but you know, I feel what you know, like when you're laying music down. It's like, all right, you know, I like that. Yeah. So he's good. Check him out. Yeah, right and we're not say, we're not saying this shit just because it's on camera. Like yeah. if the shit was trash, we wouldn't even have oh, yeah. that. Yeah, tell me if it's trash. <laughs> like straight, <laughs> no, 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 straight no, no, up. No, bro, we you we we love what you do. Thing, like look, you made it here. Not saying like we big or like from a cocky standpoint, but kind of what Tay was saying is we bring people with good stories, like how what they had to go through. Like you know, you going through Olive Garden, whatever. You know, being on your brother's couch and to making it to where you are too. Even though you might not, you have high goals for yourself of what you want to achieve and the dreams, but it's still, that's still a story. Yeah. You know, we've had people that we don't want on here, even if they do have a big following base, because we don't feel like they have a story, you know? Right. And that's what this podcast yeah. is about, is for you to be able to give advice to someone who might be, you know, there's a lot of people out here trying to make music. Um, but this leads me to my next question is, so you took a big break off in 2022. So what did you feel like you were, aside from, you know, putting the time, energy, and efforts into your relationship, what kind of things were you doing career-wise to still push yourself to get to that next level? It was more so, like, just, I was still recording. Like, I, I, I have, like, a whole, I'll show you guys, like, some unreleased shit after this podcast of what I got. But I just have a lot of, like, I was still recording. Like, I still got so much stuff in the vault to where I got damn near five albums worth of music even more maybe but um i would say like youtube was a big is a big like help in a sense of like i got to take time off of music but our youtube is helping me stay relevant did you start the youtube media. last year or you started at the we same started time started youtube 2020 in november and is like, that the channel with youtube or yeah, is it okay no we started it because we got together may of 2020 and I didn't really like bring her around social media because she wasn't doing social media at the time. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, nah. She was just working and um, she wasn't really like, oh, I want to do YouTube. Like, and so when I did pitch it to her, I'm like, eventually I do want to do a YouTube channel with you. And what was that? Six months later? Six months later, everybody knew like, okay, Reese has a girlfriend or like, He's like talking to some girl. I never really brought her around social media. And then November, I brought, I literally posted a picture with her. And then I was just like, we're starting a YouTube channel. Everyone was like, Man, oh, this is going to foreshadow to when we bring you on for an episode. Yeah. <laughs> and she could tell the story um, of like how it helped her and stuff. But that definitely like kept me relevant while I was taking a break okay. unintentionally on music. And so, but I mean, I definitely would say like just little business ventures that I like the podcast and stuff, keeping it relevant. As long as I was just staying relevant on TikTok and Instagram and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I felt like it's going to be a lot. It would be a lot easier to come back and start dropping more music again. Okay. And for those that we didn't say it in the beginning when we first did the intro, but Reese and his brother and, you know, a mutual friend of ours, they got their own podcast two out here in Arizona called Talk That Talk. Yeah. Um, I think what the IG is Talk That Talk Clips yes. with a Z. Uh, so follow that too. They got some bangers. Uh, you guys' shit is a little different. It's more on like, uh, you know, our shit could be funny too, but yeah. you guys more like funny. It's like unfiltered. Unfiltered. No yeah, filter. yeah, yeah no filter. Y'all did one with, um, what's the guy with that? Uh, Eli? You talking about young? Uh, oh, Elijah. Yeah, Elijah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yo, how did, so. <laughs> We we've been following him for a while. He's funny as fuck. Like he you does. Like, him on, bro. He, yeah. he would one hundred percent be down. Like he's a humble ass dude. I actually learned a lot about his story from yeah. you guys. Yeah. Podcast. No, seriously. Because I did not expect to hear any I was Absolutely like, man, this not. shit is just goofy, whatever. Yeah. But like his story is actually pretty no, dope. Yeah, he's he's definitely a cool cat. So yeah. Who who came up with the idea of uh, eating and shit on the on the episode? 
Me. That was you? 100%. I was like, oh, we got to get that shit live. We got to get it live. We just got that Duke AZ's chicken to just sponsor that shit. And sponsor yeah. the episode. So it was cool. Hell and then I, I so you said now you have you know the guitar and you got some you know you're uh, singing over the guitar. What instruments do you play or have you played or tested? So or? I I used to play the drums. Okay. And then I learned how to play piano, and then this past year I just uh, started like messing around with the acoustic right now. But I'm not where I want to be. So sure. do you feel like playing those instruments you pick up? on sounds or do you need like music sheets i'm always this is gonna throw y'all off but i'm like i play by sound because i was born deaf so whoa born deaf? hold on <laughs> i told y'all to curse I'm, okay Wait, yeah hold on hey, there's no information i saw yeah. it <laughs> yeah, no nah, i was born deaf and when i was two i had got surgery and they okay because i was like i don't see any hearing aids yeah no nah. oh you're like yeah look <laughs> thank you nah, yeah, but when i was two uh the doctor or like a doctor came to my mom and said, like, we we think we have a surgery that'll work. And so, do you remember God, what yeah, type of surgery it was? No, dope. I don't. Was my it? mom would be able to tell you guys everything. That's crazy, though. But That's a, all I would hear was just like thumps. And so when we were in the car, I'd be like, mm -hmm, and I wasn't talking. And someone could sit behind me and clap hell loud or scream Bro, at me. Bro, that just made your story even that much Damn. more dope. That's you gotta crazy. start with That's that. Not, That's this is, this crazy. Is crazy. Bro, you just. <laughs> that's, that's a wrench off, in the bro. story. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it was a curveball, but I definitely think that's one of the reasons why I'm destined to like do music. And she always makes makes a joke why I play soccer is because I wore correctional shoes when I was younger, so like my feet were like pointed. Yeah, <laughs> 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 my feet were pointed opposite ways, and so I had to wear correctional shoes, like wooden shoes, to like fix my feet. Mm. And now I'm hella good at soccer, so I feel like it just it played a big part in both. You know, so. damn. That's I, I, I know. So we, well, you know, somebody whose feet are like when he runs too. It's like this. I'm you talking like, about bro. LeBron. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I meant so, personally. Oh, personally. But actually, LeBron has bowed legs too. If you want, if you look at him, his legs are bowed out. What's crazy so, is all good athletes are bow legged. Isn't that really? crazy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the like major athletes, their legs are like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. so, so the album. Uh, Obviously, it's like you haven't released it yet, but I kind of want to. Well, we want to know like what goes into play when you're putting out music. Like, what are you? Okay, so you did a song, Private Island, which I, I really like actually, Thank by you. the way. Like, what goes into play when like you're working on this song? Like, the lyrics, like, like what inspires you to like put that out? Uh, so what's crazy is at the time I was working with uh, this girl named Laze, she's a writer, um, still really good friends with her. Um, she's an artist herself and so we were working a lot like we were co-writing a lot of records and stuff and um i was doing i locked in with stevie at epicenter the studio that i was talking about um she came out for like a week and we just worked we worked on like i was planning on putting out like a five track ep and we made that one song and it was legit like he just came he just came up with like the keys we were just making the beats in, in the studio too. And he came up with the keys and we were like, she was like, what, what, like, where do you, where do you picture yourself with this beat or whatever? And it's crazy. Like whatever she's like, we'll just piggyback off each other. Mm. And so she started writing the hook. I'm gonna be honest. Like I won't take like full responsibility for the record, but definitely made it come to light and putting that out. Like, the process of that shit, it was just, we recorded it. And then I was in LA and I told, well, what's crazy is our YouTube friends, Juju and Dez, they do YouTube. I don't know if you know I've them. Heard of them. Um, but they were looking for an intro song at the time. So I was like, yo, this unreleased record I got, like, it's crazy. Like if you, if you guys want it. And I sent it to them and they were like, bro, they were like, let's shoot, let's shoot the intro. Let's shoot the intro. So they shot the intro. They dropped it. They dropped the intro and people were like, we want the full song because it was only like 20 seconds of it. Oh, damn. And they were buzzing at the time. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let's shoot this video. We're in LA. I hit up this diner. It's like an outdoor diner. It was like right around the corner from where we were staying. And they were like, yeah, you can shoot in our par parking lot. Shot in the parking lot. And then I shot uh, me and Nick. We climbed, bro, 
we climbed a mountain. It took us an hour and a half to climb. <laughs> That's commitment, bro. Yeah, <laughs> bro. Hike. You said we gonna hike hey, first. My my mom was so me and my mom was watching it, and uh, cause she was like, "So who you guys bringing on?" I was like, "It's just uh, his an artist named Young Reese," and I was like, "You want to like check out his music?" So we watched that song. We watched that video. She was like, man, he got to have a lot of confidence to be on that high-ass mountain. Yo, <laughs> like, nah, I'm going to be honest. I was holding back in my yeah. face. Like, I was scared of shit. Because I was standing on a rock behind me. was like, I looked down. And it's a ledge. Like, oh, I saw shit, right I looking off. down, bro. And no. You, play, you played it half. smooth, though. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it took us like an hour and a half to climb it. I didn't even climb with the clothes that I, like, was in. It was, they, were in the, they were in the... Uh, in the backpack, but I had the shirt like this, like on a hanger, because I'm like, I'm not wrinkling this. So we were like climbing through the big ass rocks, and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna toss the shirt so you do not drop it. <laughs> oh, so man. I tossed that to him, <laughs> and we just shot it, and it took us like probably half the time to get down, but we had all the equipment on us, and Nick like plays a big part in like, you know, the, fi the visuals and stuff. Like, Nick has shot every single one of my videos except for one of them, and uh, we just grew together, bro. Like I was helping him get clientele. He was helping me with, you know, my visual content. And he lived in a house with um, a producer, a writer. Like it was like one of those houses to where they just all rent out a room mm -hmm. where they sleep in, and like it's just a creative what, wait, house. What's Nick's last name? Lamarck. Oh, okay, I thought it was. A and it started he, sounding too familiar for another. No, name. yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> his roommate, his name was Fransky, and he had a studio. Hella talented dude. He's from Hawaii. Had a studio in the Oh, crib. you know they're good with the and freaking acoustics too. Yeah, man. bro. He's like unbelievable. I'll put him up with any other engineer and he's fucking him up. But, and that's when me and Fransky just connected and like, I'm just the type of dude, like I'll get along with anybody until you cross me. And then it is what it is. But I can see through people. And so I just saw like, he he actually wanted to help. And like, he ha he has his music career that he was working on too. So um it was definitely like bro it, it's crazy how everything panned out and honestly music is all about connections like you want the top engineers you well want. what's what's cool about you bro is you literally number one i feel like a lot of artists d won't admit or don't even shout out their writers so i feel oh, like yeah, the fact 100%. you give it you gave a shout out to literally every single person from your team and i think that's where it starts with is the team if you got facts someone that you know is going to pick up the slack where you're not good at and you're playing everyone to their strengths and everyone's running on all cylinders, bro, that's when you got some Magic. different, magical. That's <laughs> cliche. Nah, that yeah. But uh, I think that's that's dope because I actually know another artist in LA uh, who wrote songs for, uh, what's her name? Koi LaRae. Koi LaRae? Yeah, yeah, her. And like some beef happened between them because he had no wasn't recognized at all for any of that shit. So I was like, damn. But for you, right away, boom, this is my team, this is my visuals, it, that's, that's fucking you sick. You know what's crazy? Speaking of writers, <laughs> can I get messy? Get Absolutely. Messy, bro. Bro. <laughs> so, it's a little goofy at, there's... <laughs> <laughs> Adam, Adam, Adam. Hey, whatever, whatever you would say on Clip Talk this. to Talk, hey, say it. Yeah. Say it with bro, your you chest. Bro, you worse on Talk That Talk. Yeah. Clip this. Tag me. I'm David, like, hey, you heard shit. it. Clip it, David. Yeah. Because I know you be clipping your own shit when David. you be editing our stuff. <laughs> yeah, David edits this shit. Yeah. All right, David, clip this. <laughs> so my girl, she had a job, right? And there was this artist out here, and I thought we were cool. But he had tried getting at her while she was serving, right? Wait, knowing that you... Nah, no, no, no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I didn't, like... This is where we weren't we weren't a really uh, like a social media. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so you guys were together, but just not. Yeah, we were just public present together. in the social media. Yeah, we weren't public. Like, okay. Okay. Um, so he had tried getting at her, or whatever, and she was like, "No, nah, I got a boyfriend, whatever." And he was like, "Oh, what does he do?" And she told him like music, and he does music too. So he was just like, "Oh, <laughs> no, like, he really is it? like oh he does music, did it?" She showed him me, and he was like. Oh, you talking about the artists that don't write no music? Listen, this is what I gotta say to this because I've, I've never, I've never pressed him on this because I don't give a fuck about it. But his music's trash. He okay, trash. like I'm being honest, like, and he, he claim, like, he legit takes pride in like, oh, I write all my shit. This is what I'm getting at. It don't matter if you write your shit or you don't, right? Like I've wrote my shit. I've had ghostwriters on songs. It don't matter if you write your shit or not. It matters if you execute it well, 
right? Kevin Hart. That's clip awesome that, person. David. Drake, clip it. Okay, yeah, so exactly. When you come, cor come correct, when you talk about we could put both our songs next to each other, I guarantee you everyone's going to gravitate to my side. Like a versus? Okay. Oh yeah, for sure. Fuck everything. Up. No, like, I can everything. play. I can play bar for bar. I can play two of my it. songs. He can play ten of his songs. Right, that's it. Let's I mean, the number. Hey, we gonna see that clip too. No, I'll tell you guys who it the is. The numbers. Here, though, but yeah, the, the numbers speak for themselves. That's oh, all yeah, I gotta easy. say. Oh, seriously, they, easy. That's all it is. But uh, going back to music, because I know you make um, Spanish music as well. Yeah. Are you fluent in Spanish? I'm not like 100% fluent, but okay. I'll get by for sure. Like, are you one of those people that can understand it better than yeah. speak? Okay. Wait, yeah. So when you post a song in Spanish versus posting a song in it, what do you feel like triggers more numbers in terms of like how viral it goes? Because the Latin world Bruh. is huge. Like, like reggaeton music? No, not no. Uh, like even like Bad Bunny, yeah, uh, that's, J that's Balvin. Reggaeton music. Is that reggaeton? Yeah, yeah that's reggaeton oh, music. Yeah. Oh shit, I'm tripping. Yeah, I dated it in Hispanic. Yeah. I'm gonna get canceled. I did it in Hispanic. That's why I know, because I used to date one, so yeah. It's definitely a different world. Like when I dropped my first uh, Spanish EP, here, I dropped my first Spanish EP, I remember exactly where I was at. I was at a New Year's Eve party, 2019. We were going into 2019. And I dropped the I dropped the Spanish EP, legit, the six in the morning the day after, like on New Year's Day, six in the morning, six hours after the shit dropped, I get a call. I'm like my phone is blowing up. I'm like, yo, what is going on? Truly, he says me. that like, all humble real quick, as nah, if like he don't know he just dropped this song. No, the night but before. I'm like I'm like truly, what are you calling me for? Like I just went to sleep at like three in yeah. the morning, so I get a call at six, and he's like, yo, you hit the charts, bro. Like this was the first time I hit the charts. I was above Bad Bunny, right under Ozuna. Like I That's was second crazy. on the charts for Damn. albums. Damn. For like regular, like in the uh, Latin, it was Latin, uh, the Latin charts. And I was like, oh shit! Bro, I different. swear, I was in a hotel. Like, I was in. I didn't have like any bread at the time, so I was in a rundown hotel. And I ran around the entire hotel like, <laughs> bitches! I hit the charts. <laughs> yeah, like, I, like, remember I was hella hype, but yeah, it was cool. But that. That genre is definitely a whole different like world. World to tap into. Oh, Cause man. I've been to a Bad Bunny concert, bro. I see how much love they show up, and even like Bad Bunny was showing hella love to his fans. It was insane. Like they said, his last tour he made just off the shows he made over five hundred mil. Fuck, just I off believe it, bro. City. He's running. And, and I've been to literally like sixty different concerts, and I feel like his that energy was just different. different. Yeah, and the like Latin the, community is way different. Like, like you, I give props to them. Like you said earlier. Uh, there's so much music in life um, and cultures, like certain cultures have certain music. And when you're more cultured, um, how do I say this? Like culture music kills it, like stomps everything, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because my favorite song, I can't remember what it was called. You had a song called Solo? Sola. Sola. Yeah. I love that joint. Thank you, Rose. Yeah. I, in the video. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> that was her first... Yeah, that was her first video that she was in. First you got you got to keep pressing Latin music. I'm not telling you what to do, but yeah. I just want to, yeah, I'm trying to hear <laughs> it. I'm that's, not but that's, you do, that's but why I, that's why I asked though, like early in the conversation, like what genre do you consider yourself? Because like you can, can you can um fit you you do fall into reggaeton music, R and B, hip hop. So it's because like you you're very like um how can I put it very broad. Yeah. So your music, a lot of people can relate to your music. So it doesn't you don't just have one specific uh fan group. So I think, damn, y'all just gonna do all that shit in my own It's all good, bro. I see Reese do work. Fuck that talk, bro. I'm sorry. Hey, you are distracting me. I'm like, I can't. I'm, I'm still listening. I can't yeah. what you're saying. No, 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 no. So I just want to like throw that out there because I think that's, like you said, like that culture, like, well, I don't say that culture, but that genre, like far as music goes, like crazy. Like they have, you know, events like in Mexico where like Bad Bunny, um, I think it's um, Ozuna. No. Ozuna, yeah, you have him, and it's just like so many. When they come and they bring a crowd, like oh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. They're shit go wild. City down for sure. Seriously, yeah. and it'd be like a three day event. It's a so, way different. So who, who do you listen? Who is like like you inspiration? Say? Yeah, I would have actually. It's like a three part question. One is who do you listen to a lot? Can like, you answer who, that? Who's my top person that I listen to? You, trick me? No. Like, Who's my top artist that I listen to? You could do two. Top two. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Oh, okay. Don't yeah. sleep on Justin Bieber. Just, did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> I watch this shit, bro. 
<laughs> nah, Justin Bieber and probably Drake. And okay. It sounds so like cliche, but Drake, Justin Bieber, uh, yeah, that's really like. Bieber has some some freaking tracks Justin that go Bieber hard. Slept on oh, he's because, tough, man. Yeah. Didn't he get he famous was, off YouTube doing like covers? Yeah, he for was other? like fourteen. Like yeah, that's insane. On the on the sidewalk, was just so, and what's what's crazy is um you and you like Drake is your favorite, and you met him. Yeah, that's nah, tough. It definitely is. Oh, it yeah. definitely is a different feeling when like you grow up listening to these people, and then you yeah. just are in was the same room was the like, interaction cool when you met him? Yeah. Oh, bro. Cause we didn't we didn't get to talk about. Bro, that. I feel like this conversation could go on for like. <laughs> nah, we gonna we gonna wrap it up. We gonna wrap it up soon for sure. It could. I could talk for sure, like a long time. But my run in with Drake was this was funny. So at Drake's party, like when uh, Max got me in and stuff, I didn't meet Drake that night. I met Drake at his club, Delilah. On uh, what's Delilah? I think it's on Hollywood. Is it's either on Hollywood or Sunset. Um, but he had an event at Delilah. It was me, my brother, Truly, and Laze. So Max comes and gets us in again. Uh, we go in and Shout like. Shout out to Max, bro. He's yeah. the plug everywhere. So <laughs> Laze. Oh, I'm sorry. So Laze is real cool with Murder Beats. And so Murder Beats was walking right behind Drake. And so when Laze, like, she went to go say what's up to Murder Beats, Murder Beats but. She like tapped on Drake's shoulder <laughs> instead, of, <laughs> instead of Murder Beats because she was like Murder and tapped on the tapped on Drake's shoulder and Drake turned around and looked at Jose like who the, who the fuck? fuck is tapping and then his security looked at her like oh, you're back crazy. The fuck up. Yeah. and then Murder was like oh what up Zay what up Zay and then that's when I was like uh, Drake was like right there and he stopped with Murder and that's when I was like yo what up like. Um, I'd be kicking it with French and stuff. I pulled the French card. And I was like, Yo, I'll be, I'll I feel like in that industry, for you to get like <laughs> to be valid, you have to drop. But he names, follows right? Max, and Max posts me, and he actually liked one of my like one of Max posts that you were was in? of me, yeah. and so he was like, Yeah, I've seen you. I've seen you. It was good, bro. And that's that's like legit the only running. You think that he was I've capping had. or not? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, you seen me, man. <laughs> you know how much celebr how much people celebrities meet on a day. Yeah. Like, Yo, what's up? And yeah. like it just gets to the point where those handshakes are numb. Like yeah. it's just like so I, I just was like, okay, cool. Like as long as he sees my face and then eventually I'll run around and like say I blow up one day and he's like Oh, I remember him. Ran into yeah. him at Delilah. Yeah. So another get a part track of that question Drake. I asked earlier. So you say you listen to Justin Bieber a lot, like yeah. the top two uh, with him and Drake. So a two part, I'm asking you at once. One is who are some of your biggest influences in the music industry? And then, uh, did I forget number two? You mean number you three? Did. Oh yeah. I mean, technically yes. <laughs> number three. Um, Oh, who have people told you that you sound or, uh, your music resembles another artist? Mm hmm. Like, hey, um, you sound like this. <laughs> what was that? I said it's one and only. <laughs> I hate saying this because it's legit the only. Like, I, I have a name, but continue. Sorry. Legit the only person that people have like uh, compared my music to was Chris Brown. And it sounds hella funny but because he's so big. But I have so much songs like on that vibe that where people. I can see that. Or Justin Bieber, honestly. Like, I don't sound like Justin Bieber, but like, some of my music sounds like some shit that he would make. Um, and then influences, like the top influence that I feel like has influenced me. It don't even like, have to be like artists nah, or whatever. It's, it's most likely anyway. Justin Bieber. Like, I mean, I've been listening to him from the jump when little boys would hate him because all the little girls were buying, buying his posters and shit. I was just like, all right, cool. That's I wasn't like a fanboy where I was buying posters and shit, but <laughs> I fucked with his music. Like, I'm the type, like, I listen to every single genre. Like, I listen to hella country. I listen to R&B, rap, like, drill. And so I feel like I saw this post, and it was the people that listen to so much different genres of music are the people that can get along with almost everybody. Mm. And so I'll, I showed her the post, and I'm like, yup, that's me. I yeah. like that. Before but, we got to start wrapping it up shortly, I also wanted to ask, because um, going back to signing your deal, right, with French, you had that offer that you turned down, and then you've made all these other connections. What made you feel like you got to, like, I want to stick with French? 
Uh, I had gotten, the, I didn't have any offers at the time around French. Like I had turned down a lot of offers. When Private Islands dropped, I had 10 offers on the table, but they were all 360s. They were all, I want, were totally against or, I want a piece of every single thing that you do. And I was just like, you're not going to be making money on mm. shit that I get myself. Mm. And so I just, I had so much people in my ear, like you're, you got to be a young businessman that you're becoming. And so they were just like, don't sign no stupid ass deals. Like <coughs> LA Reed locked me in the office and was like, you're not leaving until you sign this. Like he was that, he was Damn. that sure. LA Reed broke Justin Bieber. Like he was the one that in, introduced him to Scooter. Oh shit. That Scooter doesn't claim. And so L.A. Reed was like one of the people that believed in Justin Bieber for the first time. So he was like, like, I legit see you as a black Justin Bieber. Like, and L.A. Reed was telling me this from his mouth. So I'm like, it's one of the biggest like music moguls in history. So what do I do? And so he took us out to uh, this restaurant called Catch L.A. Yeah. And spent like three bands on the dinner for everybody. Like, bro, every it was me and my brother, truly. My manager, Corey, Max, all of them were, like, getting, like, the top tomahawk steaks and shit. I'm like, yo. I'm like, you know, hey, the they eat good. We eat good. Corey, Corey was like, I get used to this shit. They were getting, like, all the appetizers, the sides. And I just I was just like, you know what? When, when it came down to French offering me that offer, I was like, look, this is a production deal. The numbers are looking good. Um, and it's like. I didn't sign to where I owe this nigga tens of millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did it to where I'm not going to be stuck if I wanted to get out. And so, um, I'm going to be honest. Like, I didn't take one penny from French when I signed to him. He offered me, but I didn't want none of that shit. Because like a I didn't sign-on bonus type shit? I just said, fund my production, fund when I make this music, and that's all I asked for. And then just... When I turn in my album to him, he has a year to shop my shit to major labels. And then we just go from there. So it's more so of like, I have, I just wanted full creative control with all my stuff. I wanted to be able to drop when I wanted to drop. I wanted to be able to go and do a show if I wanted to do a show. And I wanted to make 100% of that money. And so he just basically makes money off of the production that he invests into, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so you have a lot of the autonomy. Mm. Oh, sounds yeah. like was important to you, <clears throat> because creative that, control. Like, I can handle myself. Like, right. I don't really need, like, in the social media world right now, you don't need a machine behind you no more. Mm. You don't need that radio push no more. Mm. You could get pushed on TikTok, one sound, and you're viral. Yeah. And so all it takes is one. And so I'm just going to keep, you know, I can, luckily I can use my social media platforms to my advantage and use my TikTok and just push my sounds that way. My Instagram, same way. Her TikTok. All my other families TikTok. It just helps that my family does social media too. So it's not just us. And we're yeah, trying to get a reality game, right? TV show going right now. Oh, okay. Too, so. That's sick. Yeah. So, yeah. I feel like, do you feel like, because this is where it comes down to, I feel artists are willing to compromise their autonomy, their creativity. Oh, for They're sure. They're making millions now. Do you feel that financial compensation is worth Hell losing? Hell no. No. Nah, I, you can offer me all the money in the world, but if you tell me I got to make rock music the rest of my life, fuck no. Yeah. There's got to be a number, though. Mm -hmm. like, no, what I'm is not going to lie. I'll probably sell my soul, a, bro. If there's <laughs> an open hey, right? Illuminati and shit. Nah, Reese, <laughs> if there's an open check and someone's like, you got to make rock music, what's the number? 100 mil. Shit, I tell you, I make music too, 100 mil. I would too. It might like, be trash. Like, this, but you hey. so me. <laughs> nah, 100 mil. Honestly, because... It's gotta be, I gotta be getting paid hella money to do something I don't enjoy. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, because then it'll actually be like a good thing. If it's an open like checkbook, 100 point. mil. Yeah. Is what it is. Yeah, definitely. Shit. Uh, so I guess this is where we wrap it up. Where we part ways. Definitely. So but, you gotta ask a question. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So we, we normally do this every episode. So, wife, you already locked in for a podcast. So, but our question for you is who do you think will be a good fit to bring on for this podcast? It could be anyone. Other than her? Yeah, we already got her locked in. Uh, Got I'm gonna give them a long shot, Devin Booker. Make it happen. Yeah. Make it look at no, 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 <laughs> hey, don't no, give up. No, 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 I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. It's just we have mutual friends with D Book, but it's just 
the he's grind that he's in. on right he, now is now look, so we might have to get him in the off season or something oh that's fine yeah that's fine or get it you know you guys are on the verge to becoming something big so what like yeah if, i think if it, he's just gonna wait until you guys be, become some huge no i'm not giving a time frame on it just get deep book on it right. It'll be good for the city. I think, I think even though I'm not a basketball fan or nothing, we did get his boy Ish on though. Yeah, he and just it, made me money. Yeah, yeah family, Ish so. is going to. Uh, I think he's working on getting us campaign and uh, DA yeah, also. Fire. We have the avenues around it, but what we heard is he's so locked in, uh, like during the season and stuff. Yeah, it's not gonna. Be he easy. don't give a fuck yeah. about bread right now. He don't give a fuck about any. He just wants to win the championship. That's he's good. That's winner. what makes him good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll get him on off season, but yeah, ain't no time frame. Just make it happen. You'll make it happen. All right. Yeah, for That's the challenge. Reese put Thank you guys for having me, for sure. No, for sure. Reece, hey, man, we appreciate hey, you coming real, out. I appreciate you coming through. You're a real one. He shows a lot of AZ people love, man. And, uh, you know, he's as genuine as they come. And tune in to Talk That Talk. Oh, Drop all your in- yeah. social medias also. So that way David can, you TikTok, know, put that underneath. It's Young Reese. Instagram, Young Reese. YouTube, Reese and Ray. Or my music channel, Young Reese. And then our podcast, Talk That Talk podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And wait for the music. Wait for the music. And, oh, yeah. and listen to Sola. I like it. I Thank like you. it. Hell yeah. You stupid. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>